What's up, everybody? PJ Brown here, president of Plaxon Labs with the Abjects, Steph Scarra. And like I said in the last video, we are doing this new badass workout series, and I'm bringing in our top influencers, is a funny word that I like to use, to do really, really intense workouts. And my vision all along was to do legs. The Abjects, she trains really, really damn hard. And uh, she's home from California. Yes. Uh, for a short period of time, got in here to Busy Body today. Thank you, Busy Body. And we're gonna do uh, hams and glutes hard. And male or female, this is gonna be a very, very hard workout no matter what. So guys, I know a lot of you don't break your legs down the way that women do, but I encourage you to try this, this workout. It's gonna be a hard one. No one trains harder than you. <laughs> how many you. um how many weeks post contest are you now? Five. And you're still pretty shredded. Only a little bit. Still got the abs. <laughs> um what is before we get into this workout, what is your focus right now for the short off season that, that you have? So as uh, so of right now what we're focusing on is growing the glutes. Um growing the hamstrings, bringing down the arm size, bringing up the shoulders, line up the lats. So, and then bringing down the waist. So the first thing she said was <laughs> hams and glutes, and that's what we're doing today. So, good. Let's do it. Let's do this. All right, first exercise is gonna be the lying hamstring curl, and I start a lot of leg workouts with this. Even if I'm doing quads, I actually like to start with the lying hamstring curl. You guys have heard me say this in other videos before. I just find that this exercise warms up the leg and the knee a lot. Um, plus, when the hams are a little bit fatigued, they fire more, which causes the glutes to fire more. And since that's what our priority is, it just kind of makes sense. A lot of people throw in exercises like this at the end. Um, in my opinion, you should do them fresh because A, like I said, it's a really good way to warm up. Uh, but B, you can get a lot of blood everywhere fast doing this. So we're gonna do four sets and we're going to do 15 to 20 reps, we're just gonna play around with uh, foot positioning and then show you guys a couple little tips um, how you can change this exercise a lot. Uh, but this is not going to be like a warm up. We're gonna push, push it hard. We're gonna progress up. this next set we're gonna go feet all the way together I don't know if I've had you do these before uh, knees together feet together and you're gonna concentrate on keeping your toe flexed like this up the whole time not down okay and you're gonna drive through your heels all up to your butt you're gonna feel this on the inside of your hamstring way more when you do this like this. Okay. So concentrate on keeping the knees together also yep yeah, like flex your toes like this so I Good. Oh, 100%. Good. 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 You guys even see the muscle firing more in there now. It's pretty cool. Good. Good. Come on. Good. Good. Give me four more like that. Three more. Two more. One more. Good. So that's actually my favorite way to do these, but I varied a lot. Now I'm gonna do the complete opposite now. We're gonna open our legs up wider. Okay. And we're gonna angle our toes out like this. Okay. And you're gonna be curling, it's gonna feel like you're curling in more, but your feet are gonna be wider and your, and your, your knees are gonna be out more. Out. So it's kind of like a frog position. Uh-huh. Um, and this you're going to feel actually on the outside of your hamstrings a little bit more. This one is going to feel awkward. So we'll see how, we'll, I'll guide you if you're getting stuck with the weight. Okay. Um, you're not going to be as strong this way. You shouldn't be at least. Right. Good. 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 And this you'll feel firing through here. Most of you will. Keep going. Good. Good. Five more. 
four, three, two more, one more. Good, perfect, awesome. So what are your thoughts on like, some people are say, oh, you should bring your leg all the way to like your butt. Mm -hmm. So if you've been training long enough, you should have a good enough mind-muscle connection where uh -huh. you can make the muscle fire in many different positions. For instance, a lot of people when they do cable crossovers, right? I see people, you probably don't even train chest, but I see people, they, cr they come cross all, all the way over like this. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll see a lot of like the pros that have bad form in videos stopping like right here. Yeah. But you should be able to contract your chest really, really hard uh -huh. with your hands. And then I can contract my chest in all these positions without having to cross so, so, so far over. Right. So when you do an ex exercise like this, I have trained with people who stop at like the 90 degree point, mm -hmm. which is actually pretty hard to do to stop in the middle. And then I've worked with people like myself who like to go all the way from the bottom to all the way up to your butt. Now, those other guys will argue that once you get past that contraction point, you start going more towards your butt, yeah. you take the tension off, which you kind of do. You kind of do. Um, I think it's a matter of personal preference, but also paying attention to how you feel the muscle contract. Because if you're, if you're as advanced as you are, you got to know what's best for you for feeling a contraction. Some people are going to tell you to do things a certain way, and if you don't feel it firing right, you don't want to do that. You got to do what's best for you. So, when you're training, do you feel it contracting more a certain way? I typically do whenever I bring it all the way up. Then whenever the weight gets a little bit too heavy, yep. like it just becomes like impossible to bring it all the yeah, way no, like, it up is. to the butt. It, it, if you lower the weights down then you can get into more like fancy ranges of motion. Mm -hmm. Cause another great thing you can do, which we're not gonna do today, <laughs> uh, cause it can be a little hard in the lower back is you can lift your knees up and really come back and contract more, which is very right. similar to like doing a hip thrust. And uh, people that don't know would look at that and say, oh, that's wrong. You're, you're supposed to have your hips fi fixed, but you're actually contracting the muscle even harder. Yeah. It's just a matter of knowing what you're focusing on and what's best for you. But I do, I do, short answer to that is I believe in going through the far, farthest range of motion. So this last set, we're gonna go just a little bit heavier and we're gonna go to 15 again. We're just gonna bump it up 10 pounds, but this time we're gonna do just regular form, whatever way you feel the most comfortable with. Good. Good. Good, come on. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. Keep going. We got four more, come on, you got this. Three more, two more, one more, come on, you got this. Up, 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 good job. Very good, blood's definitely going. All right, so we're gonna move right into, we do a lot of um, hip thrust or glute thrust exercises with barbells, We've actually done it on the Smith machine before in a video. Um, you can do them on the floor. This particular machine, if you have a gym that has this, it's a very cool machine. Yeah. Um, certain gyms are starting to have these more now. It makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about setting the bar up on your lap and get a pad and all these other things. Um, since we have it, we're gonna use it today. Um, and we're gonna actually go pretty conservative on the weight because I want her to do these reps really slow and I want her to squeeze really hard because we're gonna go into our heavier stuff after that. So this, we're gonna actually do in a 15 to 20 range, super slow. I'm gonna have you do the first weight, the first set with no weight and just really squeeze your contractions hard, see how you feel on it and then we'll pick your weights after that. It's pretty smooth. I don't know if you've used this before. I've used it before at certain gyms, but not least on to be honest, like I try to avoid, <laughs> what is it called? Like uh, I have to force myself to do hip thrusters just because it's so hard to set up. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. It takes so That's long. That's what's cool about this. So if you're, if you're there's, there's two mindsets that you can have towards the, the hip thrust. You can not worry about all the setup, go super slow, really strict, and squeeze like crazy, which is very effective. Or, you know, we got girls on the team that can do a lot of damn weight 
Then you gotta go through the hole, getting the pad, getting the bar. It helps if you've got somebody to help, help you do it. 100%, and then I've noticed too with a lot of girls, even with myself, I'll try to go way too heavy on yes. it. And then I'll just feel it all in my quads, barely on my glutes, just because I just don't, and then you'll notice that like, I can't go up as high. That's so. What, so that's what we're gonna do on this. We're gonna focus on coming up really high and contracting really, really hard. Do you like where that is? Yeah. Good. That's a perfect pace. Nice and slow and straight. Good. 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 Just like that, keep going. Exactly how I want it. Good, squeeze hard at the top. Good. Good, we're gonna keep these going. Good, keep going. Good. We're gonna do five more. Four. Three. One more. Perfect. No, can't get any better than that. Um, so we're gonna keep the pace and the reps slow like that. I'm gonna put a small amount of weight on. Uh, but I want them slow. That was really good. We're gonna work up, work up slow on these. We're gonna do um, reverse hacks next, and that's where I'm having to go pretty hard. Awesome. Yeah, with so these, you know in your head. Yeah, with these, my, my ego gets a little hurt because I'm like, ugh, this is just 10 pounds. That's not high enough. But if you really focus on like the contraction, and you know, with anything, like the weight's just relative. You yes. can go heavy with any weight, even if it's like two pounds. So it's just about, you know, the amount of reps that you do and the contraction that you have with it, so. Plus you can cycle around your heavier, and conservative days anyway, and make them completely different. So a lot of times, people get so, so caught up in just moving weight. Oh yeah. You know, today we're today we're gonna do a little bit of everything, but you want to feel the blood and you want to feel the muscle contracting. Mm -hmm. Also guys, hard, like she was saying, is relative. So doing something very, very slow, it's kind of hard to mentally psych yourself up to do something really slow for a long time. But it's hard and, and challenging in a different aspect that you're in there for a long time and you're making yourself stay doing it slow and really focusing on the contraction. There's a lot of benefit that you get from that. I feel like one of my biggest pet peeves is when people ask me, it's like, oh, should I do lower weight, higher reps, or should I do higher reps and heavier weights? Like, the weight, once again, it's relative. It doesn't matter. So, like right now, like, my glutes are, like, fired up. That's what we want. And it's like, we only did, like, 20 pounds on this, so. And on these, if we get to the point where it's too challenging and she has to start speeding up too much, then I don't want to do them anymore. Then that defeats the purpose of why we're doing them like this. Four, three, two more. Oh yeah. This is hard, one more. Good, awesome. So on this last one, just because her form is so strict and she's getting so much out of it, we're gonna 
switch things up a little bit and now we are gonna go a little bit heavier, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually strip it. So as it starts to get challenging, rather than her having to grind through the reps, we're gonna actually peel the weight down so she can keep going super, super strict and still get the rep range we want. So I'm starting to like this machine. I've used it before, but I think I always go a little bit. You have to like mess around a little bit a lot. Yeah. Because I'm like old and broken, there's a lot of guys that are way older than me that still look amazing and train really hard, but it's just my excuse. I mess around with a lot of machines with really low weight to try to figure out how I like them the most. And I find machines that I wouldn't have thought that I really loved that work really, really good. And this is, this is actually one of them. All the way up one more, I'm gonna pull some weight off. Go. Good. 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 Good, come on. Good, keep it going. Keep going. Come on. Keep going. Couple more. Couple more. We're gonna do one more. I'm gonna pull one more plate off. We're gonna do these super slow. Squeeze them really, really hard. Keep squeezing your glutes. Come on. Squeeze hard. Come on. Slow and squeeze hard. There you go. Good. All the way up. Squeeze real, real hard. Do one more like that and squeeze it super hard. Good job. Is it? Yeah. Very good. So guys, when you train the way that I'm, I'm having her go through these, so a, a lot of people say, there's, there's many different schools of thoughts for training, but a lot of people say that they train till failure on every set. And there's other people that say that they don't. And there's always like arguments on like who's right and who's wrong. But for what we're doing now, what I want to do with her is stimulate everything and get blood going a lot and all these muscles so that now on this exercise, she can go to like real failure sets, but have everything be fatigued first. So if I had her doing like crazy drop sets and everything now, her body would be so fatigued that she wouldn't be able to handle the, the weight on the reverse hack squats that I want her to handle. And I want her to, she's tired, but she's still fresh and the muscles are, are ready to fire hard where we can still make it really challenging. And now we're gonna do failure sets. Uh, I haven't decided on how many sets of reps we're gonna do yet, but um, this is an exercise that she's used to doing and we can do them. Here's the spot really. Sounds so. good. Yeah, I'm a little different. I like to just go to failure from the beginning. But, and I, and I do see how it affects me later on once I do get to like the rest of my exercises, I know I can't like push further. But I, what I've noticed that I do personally is like I'll switch up like every single time that I do leg day, I'll, I, I will switch up the order of the things that I'm doing. So then like that, that exercise, I'm going like super, super like at heavier weight than I would have the previous time. Hey, try to do them just like that, where you're not hitting the bottom. There you go. Perfect. There you go. Perfect. I like that. Come on. Good. Good. Try not to bottom them. There you go. Right there. Good. Come on. Couple more. Come on. Good, keep going. Keep going. Get three more. Come on. Two more. Come on. Perfect. That was a really good one, actually. Good. I think you can handle a little more weight. Four more. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's funny because like, the one that I'm used to doing, I can go lower, so that's why I keep like smacking yeah, into it. Yeah, um, that's annoying. Like, ah. Actually, if you, when you watch the video, you're gonna see that you're going to like just below parallel, which is really all you need to. Yeah. A lot of people when they squat, like when you watch like certain powerlifter squat, I, I I admittedly used to squat like this a lot. They go all the way down to where like their ass is hitting the floor, yeah. and that's awesome. 
However, it actually doesn't really fire your glutes anymore. Mm -hmm. Your glutes actually fire the most when they're right at 90 degrees. They go a little bit lower than 90 degrees. After that, when you're, when you're breaking 90 degrees, what's happening is you're flexing your knee a lot more. And so your quads will have to go through a farther range of motion. We're actually not getting extra out of your glutes. So on this, the way that she's doing it, um, the glutes have to fire from that stuck position, which is also why I don't want her to bottom out. And so they have to engage really hard going up. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what we want. I think that uh, we can go a little heavier. Uh, what do you want to try? Uh, we want you to fail in like the 12-ish range. That, you could have did more than the 15 that you just did right there if we, if we were keep, kept going, so. Try another 45, that might be, I could, I could try it. Try 25 first? Sure. More okay, I mean, I'll be fine. Do you want to do 45? Yeah, sure, <laughs> let's do it. Right. Might die before, but. <laughs> come on. Uh, All right, come on. There you go, come on. Drive. Come on. Up. Come on, you got more. Let's go. Up. Come on, you got more. Drive hard. There you go. Keep it going, come on. Push. You got more, come on. Up, up, up. More, come on. Drive hard, come on. You got more, come on. Come on, keep grinding them out. Push, 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 give me another one. Come on, you got a few more in you. Up, 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 give me three more. You got three more, come on, come on. Push, 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 two more, come on. Come on. Drive, 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 give me one more like that, come on. Come on, everything you got. Come on, push, 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 push. Ah, damn, very good. Very good set. So, you can see that she has like an extra gear that most people don't have because she was getting stuck on like eight, nine, where I was like, ah, oh, she's got like one or two more and she grinded out, probably could have kept on. I was barely touching the last one. So it's hard for many people to figure out what actual failure is because when you're on your own, truthfully, failure is when you can't complete the reps anymore. But when you have a good spotter that knows what they're doing, which I encourage knows what they're doing, they can guide the weight just enough where they're not really doing it, but they're keeping you moving at a good place where you're gonna get more reps. So you're actually going beyond what your personal alone failure would be, but taking the, the sets into farther, that farther range of, of fatigue that they wouldn't be able to do on their own. I actually think that you can even do a little bit more now. That was really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think as long as you can keep that really good form, that's what's the most important part. And yeah, as PJ was saying, like having a good spotter helps out a ton because if he wasn't here, I would have definitely like stopped maybe at like max eight. That was really, that was, so. I think that you probably could have kept going a few more too. Cause that was like just tapping it. Yeah. That was really good. Ooh. How's your lower back? It's fine. Good. Yeah. Main thing when you're doing this also, guys, her form is very strict. So you'll notice when she goes down, she's keeping her back, her posture, really firm the whole time. Once you start going like this and rounding your back, that's when things can go, go wrong. I won't let her do that. She's, she, she knows how to train, so she's not doing it anyway. Uh, but that's something that if you're working out with somebody or watching somebody, if you're a trainer, you really want to watch out for that kind of stuff because that's when those lower back yeah. injuries can get bad. Yeah, and even if you have a, tr a trainer or a person that's spotting you and they're like, oh, keep going, keep going, and you're feeling like yep. your back is going down, like, you should stop. You so. can feel it, too. You'll feel it in your core. You'll feel it in your back. Yeah, so a big, I have a really strong lower back just yeah. from doing a lot of heavy weight, but I always, I always like recommend wearing a belt and hyperextension, doing your deadlifts, doing all that stuff. It's going to help out a ton yeah. so you can build up the weight in other areas so sometimes whenever you feel you like especially after doing like heavy leg day you'll feel it on your lower back and you're like oh my god it hurts i hurt myself most of the time you didn't really hurt yourself you're just your back is just you're really just shot. weak a lot of people don't a lot of people get lazy with hyper extensions too you do them yeah. all the time i actually don't yeah. um i used to do them a good amount but i feel like my back has gotten so um developed yeah, your erectors are very developed they're very developed so i don't really need to do it I, I pretty much get the engagement just from like doing my heavy lifting yeah um i noticed that if i do do them too much 
my lower back will, like my lower back's already like pretty big so what that does is like it pretty much like extends my my waist which is something that I don't care to do so that's why I limit the amount of like ab exercises that I do and lower back just because those areas are already pretty much overdeveloped um, but that's not that's because I do bikini I always recommend everyone you know the stronger your back the stronger your core the better when I was uh, starting out as a power lifter I used to finish with erectors pretty much every workout so even if I was deadlifting hard I would go and do my hyper extensions and and I had when I got into bodybuilding pretty seriously my erectors were so big that like my friends would joke and say it looks like you have boobs growing out of your lower back and I still have pretty big erectors but I got lazy with them because I felt like oh I'm so developed back there I got to develop everything else yep. and I do think that it's very 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 important to train your core hard too especially as yep. a beginner because when you're weak in your core your back will fail you no matter what because your back's going to keep stressing harder and so many people like we have people that are advanced all the time that come in mm -hmm. and I'll be like what do you do for abs and I even say too <laughs> and they're like nothing and I honestly don't also but I also squatted really heavy and deadlifted heavy and trained hard to develop my core for years but now I can tell you from years of not doing it my core has atrophied and weakened and my lower back is not as strong yep 100 percent. so i'm not supposed to do too many ab exercises because i've already gotten critiqued <laughs> that my core is too to this and to that but like if i don't do core like you won't be able to see my abs as defined so it's like a it's kind of like a drug to an extent where i'm like well i gotta keep doing them so you can keep seeing them i am the ab chick she so the ab chick. <laughs> i can't let my like my logo go away that's that's who i am so I, I do what I can. <laughs> right up. Come on. Take a deep, deep breath before you go down. Now push it hard. There you go. There you go. Now you're back in it. Come on. Drive. Come on. Drive. Let's go. Come on. Push. Come on. You got more. Let's go. Come on. Come on, you're in a good zone now. Keep grinding, keep grinding. There you go. Come on. Come on. Up, 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 up. Give me more. Give me more. Come on, come on. You got more. I've seen you grind out sets way longer than this before. Push, 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 push. Come on. Come on. Let's stop. Because <laughs> I can't pull it either. That's a failure set. That's a real failure. That was a failure set. That was good. My, like, shoulder starts slipping on this. I'm like, yeah. It makes it... It makes it very tricky when you're doing a machine that is not necessarily optimal for the exercise you're doing because there's a lot of other balance and whatnot that's involved. Um, however, because it is very different, I think that it's going to stimulate her body in a, in a different way also, which is good. And um, that also shows you how much she got out of the last set. Um, this is still good. We're gonna st still stick with this weight though. We're not gonna back off and we're gonna do another set with this. Very good. Very good. <laughs> I always try to like push myself like to my personal limit. Like, and if, if, like as you guys can see, like I, it's not that I gave up. It's just like my body just- Won't go. And honestly, won't go. when you're spotting somebody, you can guide them along where they keep moving. But- He when, was doing a lot of the work on when, when she reps. When she, the, the the set before that I was the rep before that I was guiding it. That one, when she hit the bottom, even with me pulling it, her body was like, nope. There's no point of me trying to like be like, come on, and like I see people doing that sometimes. But the one that, that drives me the craziest is let's see why I offend you, is when people are squatting. I'm not going to talk about countries or whatever because it is more prevalent in certain countries. And the guy is behind the girl, like <laughs> hugging them all the way underneath and yep. basically doing the squats with them. Yep. So I've had people like <laughs> argue that they're just holding them upright so they can keep control, the yeah. control on their legs. But if somebody has to like hold you and carry you up, it's just too heavy. Yeah. It's just too heavy. And you might as well just do like one of these machines yeah. that you can stabilize and the machine's pretty much doing it for the person without like, yeah, I don't know what I think of. It drives me crazy when I see that because, yes, they'll be able to move way more weight like that. I've, I've, I've had workouts where 
I trained with, so I'll, I'll tell you guys a story. When I was uh, out in California, right? I did a workout with uh, Derek Farnsworth and Pete Giacconi. And Derek is freakishly strong for his size. Mm -hmm. And we did a leg workout and I was at 500 pounds or 495. And I was done, like I was fatigued, but the way that they were spotting me, they were pulling me up from underneath and they were like more and more and more. So I kept doing more and more and more. And there's no way that I would be able to do that on my own. But I'll tell you, I overdid it in that workout. So yeah, it was cool because I was able to do more weight. And I think sometimes it's okay to do that kind of stuff, but you gotta figure out weights that you can actually move. And you have to right. find a good spotter yeah. to do that with too, because some people just don't know what they're doing. And I've seen, I seen really bad fails on that where like the people are holding it and they just still fall it's over. It's dangerous. What I like was what you said, if you're gonna go that crazy, you should just do it on a machine yeah. and you're fixed in spot. Then you can do as many drop sets and failure sets and moving the weight around as much as you want. You're locked in the same place the whole time. Uh, take your time, deep breath. Let's go. Good. Good. Come on. Come on, keep grinding those out. Come on. Push, 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 push. There you go. Come on. Come on. Up, 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 up. Nice. Come on, keep it going. Come on. Push, 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 push. You got more. Come on, good set. Up, up. Come on. Up. There you go. You're in a good zone now. Come on. Come on. The last set of the day. Last set. Come on. All out. Drive, 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 drive. Another one. Come on. You got another one. Come on. Up, 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 up. Give me another one. Give me another one. Come on. We're on a failure. Let's go. Up, up, up. Finish it. And we're good. Good. See, that time I was a better spotter. The last set she went to fail and I failed as a spotter. This time I knew she wasn't gonna get that one and I pulled it harder from the start to keep her moving. You don't wanna let somebody get buried in the bottom. But that was, that was got more reps that time, so it was a really good yeah. set. Yeah, I think I was like 12? Okay. Yeah, I was 12, that was really good. I still got counting. <laughs> so, I don't know how I discovered this. I don't know if I found someone on Instagram doing it or not, but maybe it's just my own, I guess I'm so smart. <laughs> but, um, so, I always struggle with leg extensions. I mean, not leg extensions, uh, kickbacks. Um, and I find it like very difficult sometimes just to like really engage. And I have this thing with my hips where one likes to dip in. Um, and it's something that I've been really, really working and focusing on. And this machine has helped me like pretty much load the weight. And that's one of the things with the leg extension uh, with cable machine is that you can't really load a lot of weight on it. I have another exercise that I like to do on the cable that you can really load on the weight. You're really heavy and I saw that one from Brazilian girl and I swear that one is like another one that's like my go-to but I've been doing these literally every single day uh, for my glutes and I've seen it really good um, and I usually start with these just to like warm up the glutes but you can load up the weight, go heavy or just go as slow and contract it on the uh, other ones. Um, I typically do like 20, 15, 20. Sometimes, I, like I try to change it up a good amount. I like to do um, like 20, 16, 12, 10 uh, rep counts with the sets, just going heavier each time. Sometimes I'll just kind of like stick with the same weight and just do like 20 reps. And it all depends on how I'm feeling and what I want to we'll do. We'll see how these feel because it's a different machine it than is. you used to and we'll, we'll judge it. Yeah, so basically what I like to do is I usually start with a lower weight depending on the machine if it's new that I haven't used it. I like to put level my hips on this right here and I kind of like swaddle up in here. I like to hold on like right here. Um, one of my legs is just going to just stay still and then you kick back as far as you can and as high as you can. Bring it back. And you squeeze and come back. A lot of the times I like to like bring my foot this way to hit more of yeah. this side of the glute and just kick up here and then bring it back down and just repeat. Good. Keep going. 
You got two more to match the other side. So with these, you're gonna be hitting a good amount of like your upper glute as well if you're going high enough. So you may feel it on your lower back when you're doing these. So I always suggest for you to go with these, just go at a lighter weight. And just really focus on that contraction and then making sure that whenever you bring your leg up, you have that squeeze, you're still feeling that squeeze on the way down and not letting go of the muscle. Because as soon as you let go of the muscle, and I see that a lot with just like a lot of exercises and girls doing things like, for example, like squats, they'll literally like drop and they'll go like this and then let go and come back down. Like you're literally like, like instead you should just come up here and then, you know, still holding it here instead of pushing it all the way forward. So just kind of like, it's still like a little bit of a tilt, like if you're doing a hip thrust, but not like completely pushing it forward. Yeah, that, that form was awesome too. And you can see, because you're so lean too, you can actually see your glutes contracting really hard. Your um, if you keep your legs straight, you will also feel it a little bit more as well. But I have this thing with like the back of my knee that for some reason it always hurts if I bend it too much or like, no, if I extend it too much. So I have to improvise for myself. And you but. want to focus on feeling the muscle contract the right way and not hurting. Exactly. isolation like this you should move through it fairly fast like when one leg's going the other one has a good amount of rest and then you should just progress through it it's not like when you're doing a compound exercise and you're completely dead after the set when you want to have a little bit more time I think that you should try to keep the blood in that area and just progress through it at a good rate now this is something that I do in 90% of my workouts or when I'm training somebody, I just love this combo. It's my favorite hand glute combo. I always preach supersets and I love giant sets. Some people just don't like doing that. They just want to go straight sets. But the combination of Romanian deadlift, which you can do with barbell or dumbbell, mm -hmm. into either a plie or goblet squat nails the most tricky. It's also kind of like a make-believe there's no muscle called the tie-in, but we all know the spot. Yep. It's the bottom of your butt. Yes. And you feel it there when yeah. you do these right. Yeah, you do. So that's what we, all this year I've been saying, we gotta build this, we gotta build this, we gotta build this. I think that I've rarely met people that are like overly developed there. Sometimes yeah. it happens. That's a genetic thing. But it's much easier to build the top of your booty than to, to build that, that tying area. And you gotta really focus and do the annoying. It's fun to like squat heavy and like, you know, mm -hmm. like press. It's kind of like lame to do like slow or many deadlifts and stuff. But I'm telling you, this combo nails that area. So what I like to do is go a little heavier on the Romanian deadlift. You can do barbell or dumbbell. You can pick it, whatever you're more comfortable with. So we do the Romanian deadlifts. You gotta go hard enough where her lower back's not getting fried. Um, but we'll do remaining deadlifts in like a 12 rep range. Okay. And then the, the difference between a dumbbell plie squat and a goblet squat, by the way, is where you hold the weight. So when girls are holding the weights like this, that's a goblet squat. When they're holding it like this and they're in a place, they're essentially working the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of a personal preference thing. Yeah. Um, but on those, I like to do lots of reps, play around with the speed, the tempo. Mm -hmm. So 
you would you rather do a barbell or a dumbbell for the we could do dumbbell or whatever dumbbell. for the romania that lives personally what do you like better i like the the barbell better let's do a barbell um i could do them both ways i think it's it's uh easy with a dumbbell to move it around yeah. the barbell you're stuck right here um i just always took out the more with a barbell okay let's do it i'm cool. gonna grab my gloves too all right so super strict with the romanian deadlift and we're gonna go i'm sure you'll handle that that weight easily i know you're strong so we're gonna do 12 perfect reps with this and then we're gonna do 20 reps Guys, when you do these later in the workout, it's easy to get sloppy with your form and have your lower back doing way more of the work. And that's not what we want with a Romanian deadlift. Your hips, the, the action is coming from your hips. Your, your hips are engaging and coming back with the weight. So the weight is stabilized through your hams and glutes and you're coming back up. If you're, if you're tired and you're going like this the whole time, you're just wrecking your lower back and you're not hitting your hams and glutes. We don't want that to happen. Good. 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 Three more perfect form, just like that. Two more. Very good form. One more. Good. that I have for doing these and keeping your back as straight as possible is think of your shoulders like being back. So instead of like, you know, trying to get the arms to do everything, like if you just, just bring your posture, bring your shoulders back and pull forward, kind of like bring your chest up, you'll have more of like that flat back. So, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so. The more of like, and I see this a lot, people just throwing on weight. Like I can easily do like 45 pound plates on each side and keep my form like super strict. Um, but that's because I've built up to it. And it's because my lower back is like super strong as I said in the past. But yeah, so just bring it down, bringing the glutes back, keeping your chest up and then bring it forward. So yeah. So every rep that she did looked exactly the same. That's how you know that you're in a really good locked in rhythm and your form is strict. When, you're, when your reps are looking different, you're thinking about too many things, you're thinking about moving the weight, and you're not focused on every single rep that you did was identical, and that muscle was working the way it needed to. I'd much rather see you do that than just moving weight. Um, also, also, less people will talk shit on your YouTube videos over your form not being good. <laughs> I was just thinking about like the angles. It's like, it's like, just don't, if you have bad form, just don't film from this side, just film from that side and you'll be golden. No one can tell. That's the form on. Thank you. 
Good. Keep going. We're gonna do eight more. Seven. Six. Five. Come on. Perfect one. Four. Three. Two. One more. More weight and more. And then one other thing about these, I used to go really, really heavy on these. Like I was trying to hit my PRs and I would do it without a belt. Yeah. Um, and my waist got so big. Uh, so that's why you notice, well, one for like prevention of injury. It's the reason why I use it. But then two, just to like keep my waist as small as possible. Yeah, well, one way to really work your core is not wearing a belt and using really good strong form because your core has to stabilize so much. Yep. So um, when I was uh, powerlifting, I used to do a lot of stuff without a belt because I wanted my core to be really, really strong. Yeah. And your waist does get bigger. Um, now I am actually a firm believer in cinching up a belt quite a bit. And we've seen that more and more actually as years go by of people using really tight belts often. And, and what she said is accurate. Like it, it will help keep your waist smaller. For yeah. sure. There's a lot of people that would argue that and say that that's false. It just, it prevents the muscles from being able to fire the right way because they're constricted. And so it does keep them from having to, when they're firing, they're, they're growing, you know? So one of the, one of the like most efficient ways to like work your core is not necessarily like doing crunches. It's doing compound exercises or squats or deadlifts with no belt and, and having good form. Your core is, is, is supporting you the whole time. So if you already have a very developed core, you want to avoid stuff like that. Yeah, and then I wear the gloves because I don't want my forearms to keep growing bigger. So I don't need that hand grip. <laughs> so. Two more. Three more. Two more. One more. Perfect. Right here. around have a little fun make it more challenging same way here I want these to be perfect the way that she did and strict this is a good amount of weight anyway and then we're gonna we're actually going to a lighter weight to start and with this lighter weight we're gonna do seven reps really really slow so we're gonna go four seconds on the way down four seconds on the way up and I'm gonna count annoyingly so she knows that she's going slow and then once she hits those seven reps She's gonna do seven pulses, so where she's just doing the bottom. So we're gonna get those 14 out of the way, and then we're gonna to go to the heavyweight, which she's been doing, and just grind out whatever she can till her failure zone, which could be five, it could be 20, I don't know. Um, but she can keep going heavier in these weights, so rather than having her go so heavy where she's really focused on holding the weight, I'd rather fatigue the muscle more with the time under tension, stricter form, and then go to that after. So even though this is only five pounds heavier than what she just did, fatiguing her first here will make this seem way more challenging. Good. Perfect, come on. Good. Good, come on. Come on. Good. Come on. 
Come on. Four more. Three. Two more. One more. There you go. Good. All right, super duper slow now, dude. Super slow. It's only seven reps, though. One, two, three, four, up, two, three, a little slower than that. One, two, three, four, now up slow. You're going down slow enough, I want you to come up slower though. Okay. That's what's annoying, it's coming up, so I know. One, two, three, four, that's the pace on the way up. Up slow, a little slower than that, come on, you got a couple more. Up slow, 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 keep squeezing it on the way up. We're gonna do two more like that. Come up really, really slow. <laughs> Do one more, and then you're just gonna pulse at the bottom. Thanks. Now you're gonna only go literally to 90 degrees and just pulse at the bottom, just fire your balls really hard. So right there. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, drop it. Now you're doing your real set. Come on. Yeah. Just doing this to keep the glutes really firing, guys. Video good. Come on. Good. Form is still really strict, so I know you got more. Come on. Good. Keep going. Come on. You got more. Come on. Give me more. I want to see how far you can go. Come on. Come on. Keep going. You got more. I want you to go until your form starts to really get sloppy. Come on. Then I'll let you stop. Keep going. Come on. Come on. Keep breathing now. Good. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Come on. Do five more. Come on. Come on. Two more. Don't give up. Don't give up. Come on. Come on. Three more. Form is still really good. Two more. Come on. One more. Make this one good. Don't rush it. Come on. Good job. God damn it. Woo. That was a damn good set. Uh, really awesome set. A lot of reps. How many did I do? You did so I wound up doing nine and then seven there instead of seven and seven because I didn't like two of them. And then here you did 30. 30? Yeah. Oh my god. It's like one of those things that when people tell me to keep going, I keep going. I don't stop. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I go into like this little happy place in my head. I'm like, I close my eyes and I'm like, it's okay, Stephen, you got this. <laughs> Look how much blood is in her butt right now. <laughs> First set, we're gonna do um, 15 reps. See how you feel. And then we'll judge what we wanna do with the weights and reps after that. Man, I haven't done quad extensions in so long that just like a little bit, just like start like firing up. Yeah, you're gonna fire them a lot. So let's um, let's do a few sets where we progress up in weight. Okay. Still shoot for 15. Okay. Um, and let's let's do at least two more sets like that where it's a hard 15, okay. and then I'm gonna have you do some higher up stuff after. Okay. So have that in your mind with picking the weights that you do. Is this 15 again then? Yeah, it's like I want it to be a hard 15. You know? Where you're ri risking getting sloppy for the sake of getting it. I'm okay with that. Because we're going to go super strict on the higher up stuff. 
Let's do a set where we go a little heavier. And then from that, wherever that weight is, we're gonna stay there, but we'll do some drop sets. Okay. You have a lot of blood in your quad sets of this. Yes. A lot fast too. Even just with the hip thrust, I feel like those got them really engaged. Yeah. So I was really happy with that. I love that exercise. Yeah, I just. A lot of guys talk shit about that exercise. I'm waiting for people to kind of get more with like advances in training and modern yeah. technology and science. So that exercise fires your glutes way more than squats. And don't get me wrong, a squat is a harder exercise. It's probably the hardest exercise, yep. you know? But guys will not do those. They won't do it's them. It's hard to get them around to getting to do them, but once they start doing them, it's funny. And I've actually seen a lot more guys doing them now. Um, like there are like, guys out there like the glute guy uh, brett contreras who oh, like, yeah. he like pretty much pr promotes it and like i've seen a lot more guys wanting to do it but they're still like a little bit skeptical about it because it's like i don't know like i guess i mean glute swing shows whether you're a male or a female 100%. and emg studies where they actually hook up a little electrodes to the muscles and take you through different exercises show that that exercise is actually recruits the most muscle fiber by far the glutes fire the most in that exercise over the squats where you can vary vary your squat form yep. and work your quad way more. Or you can vary it and work your lower back way more. Um, but that exercise done the right way works the glutes the most. And so I've started to make sure that people are incorporating them in. Yeah, you just have to be smart about it. Like I used to not be so smart about it. And I used to try to just put on a, so much weight on it that I wouldn't even feel it in my glutes. Yeah. I would only feel it in my quads. And I actually like last year, I did them like three times a week like I had a good amount of volume on them too and like my quads literally like they got so big and I wasn't doing quad extensions I wasn't doing squats I wasn't I was doing it I was avoiding any kind of quad exercise but yet like my yeah because you're you're really driving good. still your knee is flexed so you're if you're going that heavy where you're not focusing on squeezing your glutes the whole time yeah. and taking your hips to the proper range of motion you're pushing another thing also you your form is so good that it's like a lot of times when I'm doing these workouts I'll like fix people's form and I'll think of like points. One thing that we didn't say that you already know and I already know is you always drive with your heel yep. on that exercise. Um, sometimes when people don't do it right, it reminds me right away to tell them she, she did it perfect so I didn't think of it until way later. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the most important is pushing through your heel when you're, when you're trying to fire, fire your glutes the most. Go again. Let's do this. All right. So what we're gonna do, short break, we're gonna do 15 again, and then I'm gonna drop the weight and then we're gonna bust out 10 more reps. What are we at? One, two, three. In the 10 reps that we, that we bust out, I want them to be slow and super strict and squeeze them hard at the top. Okay, sounds good. You ready? Yeah. All right, so 15 like this. One, two, three, four, five. Super strict. You want them all the way up and squeeze your quads hard. Squeeze. There you go. Come on. Uh, squeeze. Up higher. Come on. Uh, there you go. Come on. All the way up. Good. Come on. Come on. Give me one more and I'm going to lower it a little bit. Up, 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 up. Good. Put it down. 
All the way up, come on. All the way up. There you go. Uh. Good. There you go, all the way up. Come on. A little higher up than that. Uh. Up, 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 up. Give me one more. All the way up like that, though. Come on. Uh. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And reps. Good. All right, so I picked a little bit heavier weight than I should have for the first. Uh. Now I know for the next section, we're doing it again. Doing it again. Yay. Woo. It's crazy. I usually like in the past fucked out so much more, but yeah. But once you stop doing something, it becomes a little hard. It's okay. I accept the challenge. Stay in there the way that she is, and she's gonna alternate her legs. Right, left, right, left. Now, when you do this, you can actually you can actually rotate your hip in a, a little bit, where you're really squeezing that leg hard, okay. rather than just moving your knees back and forth. Mm -hmm. So when you go the right, you're gonna really lock the right, and then you're gonna come down. And you're gonna really lock the left, and we're gonna make it a little lighter so it's easy to do that. So we're gonna do ten reps like that. We're individually fatiguing those muscles a lot. Then we're gonna bump the weight up heavier and do a, a drop set. Okay. And then you're done. Okay. All right. So. And it's cool because just from this little variation, you can see the muscle contracting differently, which is neat. The outer sweep is coming out more. Good. 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 Almost done. One more each leg. Good, put it down. Take a good deep breath. And now start busting out these reps for me. Come on. Good. 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 Come on. Good. There you go. There you go. Come on. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, and remember these are really, really strict. Really strict. Come on, all the way up and squeeze. There you go. Come on. Uh, all the way up. Let's go. Uh, That's where I want you. Come on. Up, up, up. Uh, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming to there. Uh, come on. Uh, up. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, squeeze. A couple more like that. Come on. Uh, squeeze hard. A couple more. Come on. Up, 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 up. Oh, wow, I didn't even have to help you that much that one because you got to do more. Come on, let's go. Finish it, finish it. A couple more. Come on. Come on. Up. Squeeze it hard at the top. I mean, one more good one like that. Up, 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 up. Keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Keep it moving, squeeze. And down. Good stuff. Awesome. So, that's a way where if you're worried about imbalances, you fatigue each side equally first. And then you can go in and crank out. What's cool about doing them the way that she did to start, that little rotation hits the outer sweep. You feel it a lot more. You can even yeah. see she's leaning up where you can actually see the line busting out a lot. That was plenty. That was a good workout. <sighs> On your own, you really don't need to do these extensions at the end. We just wanted to complete the legs. legs all the way. Uh, I, I think if you're focusing on hands and glutes, that was plenty. It's okay to throw in some extensions at the end. 
Um, and I would do them in a, in a quick pace, get a lot of blood in there fast, and then leave it. And I would probably structure the workout where I wasn't doing lunges or squats or exercises, but we're getting a lot of other quad work as well. Yep. We got a lot of just straight it's hams very, and stuff in today, which is it's good. It's very isolated for yeah. sure. So I feel like only when you, and I didn't even feel it though, on the reverse hack squats, it's another one you could probably feel a little bit on your quads, yeah. but I, I was fine. I, I Once you get more progressed in lifting, like you'll know how to activate some areas more than others. So you can, you know, do things and not feel it at all. And then you kind of gauge where, you know, the weight gets too heavy, where you start like recruiting other muscles. So, awesome. yeah. Well, that's how you train your hands and glutes really hard. That was a badass workout. And um, I'm very, very happy, but I kind of a little bit made her cry. Just a little bit. A little bit. Almost, no tears though. A Maybe next bit. time. <laughs> Try again, PJ. All right. Now I have to push just a little bit harder the next time we do legs. I promise you this though, she won't get hurt in any of my workouts. That's the most important part. I'm gonna keep her on the stage a lot of times. <laughs> awesome. Good job. Thank you.